what we have in Canada, what we've experienced, is in fact a significant mobile payment success story. People don't know about it because, as I said, most of the statistics get lumped into North America. And I'm here to tell you rather proudly of what we've been able to accomplish in Canada. So we'll talk about Canada number one in mobile payments in the world. And of course, you probably don't believe me, but bear with me. And I'll explain why we think that that's the case. Our mobile payments environment. I'll also talk a little bit about the factors for success. The fact that it does take three to tango, being issuers, um, uh, the technology, the retailers, and of course the carriers. Because as we, as I'll explain, our successes to date are in fact secure element based. Um, and what some of the lessons learned that we have learned that might be helpful to others from our experience. And of course, given the topic of this conference, the implications of HCE. So all three of Canada's big three uh, mobile network operators and soon the two largest regional MNOs offer secure element-based NFC mobile payment capability to their customers. All of them. That means 95% of all Canadian cell phone users now actually have access, depending on their device, and you know we can get into some of that detail, but all of the carriers actually offer now NFC um, payment capability. In Canada, we have very high penetration of smartphones. 74% of Canadian cell phone users use smartphones. Um, and almost two-thirds are Android or BlackBerry. We'll probably end up talking a little bit about what's happened with Apple Pay and iPhone, but, um, you know, in Canada, we're rather smug, and when the big, as somebody said, fruit company uh, announcement happened a little while ago, and in Canada, we said, well, good of you to catch up. Um, the only thing is it's still not available in Canada. I think most of you know it's only being uh, deployed in the United States, and we're not sure at, at this point when it'll come north. So it's not just all of the carriers, it is well, certainly all the big ones. Five of Canada's big six financial institutions now offer secure element-based NFC mobile payment capability to their customers. One actually is a hybrid, so it is a tokenization approach, but it also does use applets on the secure element. Those five banks cover 85% of all Canadian retail bank customers. The third part of the Takes Three to Tango is that 75% of Canadian, Canada's major retail merchants have contactless EMV terminals. The last number I saw, which was not that long ago, and it's hard to get the full data, was that compare that to the United States where it's barely 2%. So just an, an overview of the market, there are three na major national MNOs, Bell, Rogers and TELUS. And together, they cover 91% of the Canadian market. There are three smaller regional MNOs, MTS Manitoba, SASTEL, and Saskatchewan, Avidiotron, and Quebec. They're all very, relatively strong in their respective markets, and together they hold another 6%. Um, I don't know that in my introduction I uh, explained Endstream is actually um, a joint venture among the three MNOs, the three big MNOs. Um, Interestingly enough, we were set up to do work for the MNOs. We now end up, we actually now work as, uh, as the SPTSM provider to a number of financial institutions as well, but I'll get into that. In Canada, <coughs> we have, and these are not necessarily NFC payment now, I'm just giving you an, an overview of the, of the overall market. We're of course focusing on, on major financial, financial institutions. Um, the seven largest financial institutions in Canada together uh, cover approximately 90%. So the figure I gave at the very beginning about how many are actually doing NFC is about 85%. These are our big financial institutions. It is something worth noting when we're talking about security and the importance of, sec of security. Those seven financial institutions all come in the top 22 of the global uh, strongest banks in the world. I think five of them actually rank in the top seven. So in the financial crisis that we had a few years ago, the Canadian banks um, did very, very well. The Canadian economy did very well, partly because of our banks and partly because our banks don't fool around. They're pretty conservative. They have a very, very good regulatory regime. Um, I think that's worth saying because 
at the same time, they have embraced the concept of mobile payments rather thoroughly. The other part of the equation are the retail merchants. Liability, as I said, the liability shift happened in March 2011. Um, although there were some challenges and some deployment issues, and anybody who knows the story in Canada and some of the challenges we've had with recent uh, credit card issuances and some upset in terms of higher interchange rates, at this point, though, over 75% of our major retailers <coughs> now use contactless terminals. And again, contrast to the United States, but again, that's not until the late 2015 that they will have their liability shift. So this is a picture. Um, I can't show you the names of the different financial institutions because they themselves has, have rules about what suppliers can do in terms of use of names and logos. So you can probably put some of that together given the, the earlier slides. But you can see these are, so Endstream is in the middle. I'll talk a little bit about what we do in terms of S SPT, SM, and SEM. Just terminology, I've seen at least two different terminology or uh, descriptions of the Secure Element Manager. So we, the Secure Element Manager is what we refer to as the SEM. So whether you call it an, S, an, an SPTSM versus an SEMTSM, that we, that's SEM is what we use uh, to describe that. So we actually have three lines of business at Endstream. And this is important because the hub, hub concept, we believe, has been very, very successful in Canada um, from a standardization perspective, from a relationship perspective. But our three lines of business include um, acting as the uh, Secure Element Trusted Service Manager for MNOs. So those are the ones that we are the SEM for. Um, and as the SEM for those carriers, we are therefore connected, either directly or indirectly, to um, these banks. So RBC, which uses the hybrid secure element solution, Toronto Dominion, CIBC, Scotiabank, and Desjardins. We didn't start out to be an SPTSM. We were established by the three carriers, the three big carriers, to um, establish the technology to, to do secure element management on the basis of it being more of a utility and on a cost recovery basis. Our three, our MNOs actually do not see this as a competitive activity. Trust me, we have very strict competition and antitrust laws. But in this case, and partly because we have a small number of financial institutions, if, if one of the carriers decided to provide this service but not the other two, what issuer would want to actually have their customers only be able to use one carrier. If an, if an issuer went to only one carrier, then the issuer would be depriving two-thirds in effect of their customers from access to that technology. And so very quickly the environment in Canada became, this is something that's not necessarily going to be a competitive advantage. You know, there was a little bit of early to market, but in the end, basically everybody knows that they're going to benefit from having the technology available to everybody. The thing is, we actually did a good job. Um, we use Bell ID for software out of the Netherlands. They've been a terrific supplier to us. Um, very reliable, great, great, uh, uh, great product. We use BlackBerry to do our secure hosting. Um, very happy with them as well. And then the whole package ended up being good and like 100% uptime and satisfied customers. And so when a number of the issuers realized that, we ended up having them come to us and ask if we could do the same thing for them. Um, a number of the issuers did their own in-house solutions. Um, these issuers waited a little bit longer to see, just see what was happening in terms of the environment. And I, you know, dare say I think they're quite pleased that they've, that they did wait and they had a third-party supplier such as Endstream because, um, again, it works and the system is working very well. Uh, and as I said, more and more issuers are recognizing the value of using Endstream as the hub, not just technologically, but in terms of relationships and efficiencies. As the third part of our business, our third line of business is acting as the SE access reseller between the MNOs and the issuers. So as is here, although a number of the MNOs and issuers started negotiating bilateral agreements for access to the secure elements, 
Both MNOs and issuers are turning increasingly to Endstream to act as the reseller of SE access. Now there are a couple of reasons for that. One is that in an in increasing number of cases, it's the same technology that's being used for the SEM and for the SPTSM. So it technologically makes a lot of sense. And once you do one, and we've already done several, I wouldn't quite say it's off the shelf. Um, that would be very unfair to our tech guys, but um, it sure is easier each time and gets more consistent and quicker. And, and dare I say, over time will become less expensive. Um, but it's not just the technology, it's the relationship. So Endstream, when it was first built, when it was first established, as I said, was established by the three big carriers. Um, it, from their perspective, we were set up purely as a, a non-competitive utility, in effect. And our job was to do what we did on a cost recovery basis. So we actually run a very lean machine. Um, there was a certain level of trust that got built up with that. And, you know, in Canada, we're not a big place. We have 35 million people. Um, we uh, have a lot of connections. I mean, just to say enough, if you looked at the board of directors of the MNOs and the boarders, boards of directors of the banks, it's a bit like spaghetti. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of um, people who know each other and therefore the opportunity to build trust develop. And so on the relationship side, and more and more of the issuers and carriers were coming and saying, look, can you just, can you just do this for us, right? We don't want to have a contract, and if you've ever negotiated with banks especially, you don't want to have contracts all over the place. And so we now have uh, SE access resale agreements with all of the MNOs. Um, I shouldn't say all of the MNOs, but the three largest and the three, um, uh, the, t the three largest the two largest regional, we're in discussions with the third largest regional, and then there are a few others that are mostly sort of urban and, and specialized uh, carriers. But we're covering, in terms of MNOs, almost the entire market. Three of the five issuers already operating, two more uh, who will be launching commercially soon, and we are in discussion with several others. What we do not do in Canada, I think is almost as important as what we do do. We didn't set up to be a wallet provider. And I, to this day, I'm still a little confused at the massive hype, notwithstanding the other s session that's going over there. Um, the massive hype over wallets, which we see as being the user interface, in effect, the application on the device, as distinct from the technology to actually make the stuff work, like the actual downloading of the, of the credentials. Um, we all have seen some of the challenges that have happened in the United States with SoftGuard, formerly ISIS. Um, I, I, just a couple weeks ago, um, the challenges uh, faced by Weave. Um, we are, Endstream is, and quite honestly, the Canadian market is wallet agnostic. Issuers have their own mobile payment apps. They're simple, not a lot of bells and whistles. But you know, when I go to buy my coffee or my groceries, I just hit my, I hit the icon. It's my CIBC mobile payment app. It works quickly, easily, and all the time. I knew I, we do have uh, wallets coming in Canada. Yugo, which is a joint venture between TD and um, uh, President's Choice Bank. SureTap is uh, developed by Rogers, but will be deployed by all of the carriers. Um, they're pretty exciting. They look pretty good. But with a whole lot of bells and whistles come a whole lot of problems. And getting to market and being tested and having it all actually work and not have one be always on and it messes up with another issue because you have to understand Canadians don't just have one bank. We A lot of us actually have a couple. So when you start adding all of that into a wallet and then you want to add coupons and then you want to be able to add your loyalty points and only have to tap once as opposed to tap twice, that'd be twice, um, the bells and whistles come at a cost. They come at a cost of uh, lack of simplicity, um, consumer performance challenges, etc. And so for us, we actually just moved ahead into the market with mobile payment apps that work. We'll be thrilled, trust me. If we get some wallets out into the market that are sexy and can do all of this really great stuff, we'll be thrilled. 
Um, but we believe that one of the reasons why we've moved so far ahead in the Canadian market is because we didn't start with the wallet idea. We started with the mobile payment idea. Um, we do not limit participation in the technology. So um, the solution that Endstream offers is open to anybody. Um, we haven't set it up as a license. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, it's not free. <laughs> um, but we haven't set it up as somehow in itself a money-making venture in that sense. As I said at the beginning, we were actually originally set up as a cost recovery entity for the carriers. Um, the issuers pay, of course, for the work that we do from an SPTSM perspective. Um, but um, we're actually still very pleased that we're a very lean operation and our view is that if cost becomes the big problem in in fact growing the ecosystem we have a big part to play in um, ensuring that we are doing it this as, as a, in the most limited way possible because we're all going to benefit we all believe the carriers believe the banks uh, believe and we at Endstream believe that the more we can actually build on this ecosystem uh, the, the better it will be for everybody so we provide some services to all MNOs that wish to participate. Um, we certainly do so for uh, any issuers that come to our door as well. Bit of a summary of why we think mobile payments are so far ahead in Canada, because as you, as you can tell, I mean, we have a pretty big chunk of the population covered. Now, not everybody has NFC's uh, phones, but as you see, our smartphone penetration is very high. Um, not all of uh, Canadian cell phone users use uh, NFC phones. As, as I noted, we're waiting to see what happens with iPhones. The uh, iPhone makes about a third of the market, but of course, we'll see how long it takes before the iPhone 6 penetrates that market. Um, but the fact that we have so many large financial institutions and so many uh, cellular subscribers now have this available uh, is, a, is a pretty big deal, we think. But we do benefit from a small number of large financial institutions. We do benefit from a small number of large MNOs. We do have a history of financial institutions and MNOs having to work together. We do have a high penetration of retail contactless terminals. And some of these are not things that can be necessarily replicated. As I said, it's going to take a while for the Americans to catch up on some of this. And, you know, as another example to use the Americans, not to be mean or anything, but there are a million banks in the United States, and it can get very, very complicated, and the relationship piece can get very com complicated, let alone trying to standardize the technology. Um, we do have good technology that works. Again, if I can plug, Bell ID has done a great uh, job with us, um, at, so has BlackBerry. The fact that we've been a cost recovery utility and not necessarily a competitive service has been received, um, not to you know, belabor the point because it sounds a bit hokey, but there is in fact a very high level of trust in Canada now with what we have been building. There will never be, this will not come as any surprise, there will never be complete trust between the financial institutions and the carriers. There was an earlier discussion about worry about cost, right? And we don't want to end up having to pay the carriers. And one of the big push, one of the big uh, enthusiasms for HCE is that, well, we can disintermediate the carriers. We won't have to pay them. I think the one comment that you're going to pay one way or another is extremely valid. And as we're finding in Canada, the cost whoever you're paying carrier it's obviously a concern but reliability and technology that works is hugely important remember those financial institutions in canada that i said are kind of conservative and they do a good job reliability is a really big uh, issue for them so the last two slides just wanted to talk a little bit about the implications of the hce um, our successes have been almost exclusively secure element based and they said one uh, RBC uses tokenization but still uses an applet on the, on the secure element. Um, the wallet, the Yugo wallet I mentioned earlier, it actually, the two applets that it uses are loaded onto the secure element. 
Um, but our focus in Canada has been on technology that provides a level of security needed for full credit and debit payments, and with which bank, Canadian banks are comfortable. That where even where the hybrid tokenized solution is being used, the applets are still loaded onto the secure element for security. Technology that works. Our uh, SEM and SPTSM solutions prove every day that they offer current working reliable uh, solutions, not just promise. Uh, technology that is attracting more MNOs and more issuers for all of those reasons, and that all there remain questions of cost, we provide a mobile payment solution. The, the entire Canadian industry has now, in effect, mobile payment solutions that are relatively easy to implement and are reliable. So we do believe that the secure element-based solution is needed for security and peace of mind. Um, and it, that may not necessarily be this, they may not be the same things. You know, you could actually go to a Canadian bank and say, you know, this actually satisfies the security things, but in some ways their peace of mind is going to take precedence. And for whatever reason, you know, you remember you're half a year or two young, but many years ago there was a, a series of ads for IBM and, and it was all, all about buying a product that might be more expensive, but at least you know it's going to work. Um, but we do see HC as a huge positive. And this just goes on, elaborates some of the earlier comments today. We actually believe that uh, if HC can be appropriately tested, we heard all of the discussion today, that it would, could be, it could be a great option for the applications that don't require the same level of security as credit and debit cards. Um, we're happy to play together and we firmly believe that the more applications can, that can use mobile transaction capability, NFC capability, the more people are going to want to use their phones to do that, the more people are going to look to their phones for payment and that we all win in the end. The, so in effect, I'll just read it, the growth, the growth, growth in the mobile transaction ecosystem combining the security of the SE-based solutions where needed and the ease of implementation and use for other transactions including HCE benefits it's all.